Um, I'm Keeney Allen. I'm a voracious romance reader and advocate for the genre. I talk books on Twitter and I review at smexybooks.com. So um, just quickly, I'm gonna say your name and I'll come back for an intro. I'm gonna talk a little bit about Harlequin first, but um, if I say your name, just wave. Or there's Mona Shroff, um, Kara Bastone, and Dolores Fawson. So thank you all for joining us this morning. So first, thank you to the teams at Bookstore Romance Day and Harlequin for their hard work and dedication for this event. Um, and thank you for joining us. So a little bit about Harlequin. Just this past year, Harlequin celebrated 70 years of romance publishing with offices in countries all around the world. For this anniversary, a study Harlequin conducted with thousands of readers reaffirmed what the company always believed that Harlequin romance novels make readers feel uplifted, inspired, and empowered. They call it that Harlequin feeling. Harlequin is also an innovator of the series romance model. For anyone who doesn't know, Harlequin series is made up of 12 romance lines that range from offering historical romance and mystery slash suspense to contemporary and inspirational romance. 66 new novels are published each month and readers can even subscribe to receive their favorite lines delivered directly to their homes and e-readers. So HQN slash single titles. Harlequin Books or HQN Books has redefined romance by publishing the best in mainstream bookseller romance by the finest authors in the field from rising stars to romance royalty. In 2019, H HQN Books placed over 40 titles on bestseller lists, demonstrating that it offers something for every romance fan across all formats. Karina Adores, the latest edition in Harle Harlequin's romance offerings, launched this past June. Karina Adores is the first romance line from a major publishing house to offer category style romances exclusively featuring main characters from LGBTQ communities finding their happily ever afters. Karina Adora's novels are filled with heartwarming scenes of characters getting to know each other over witty banter, falling in love, and overcoming central conflicts that aren't focused on the main character's identities. Please note that we will be doing a gift with purchase opportunity. Anyone who purchases the latest novel from one of the Harlequin authors participating in panels today is able to receive a free ebook from Harlequin through the link in the chat. And that link will be in the chat. So now I will introduce the authors we have joining us this morning. So uh, we have Mona Shroff. Mona is obsessed with everything romantic. So she writes romantic stories by night, even though she's an optometrist by day. If she's not writing, she's making chocolate truffles, riding her bike, or reading. Or, and is just as likely to be drinking wine or gin and tonic with her friends and family. She's blessed to have an amazing daughter and a loving son who have both gone to college. Mona lives in Maryland with her romance-loving husband. Um, so Kara Bastone is a full-time writer who lives and writes in Brooklyn with her husband, son, and almost golden doodle. Her goal with her work is to find the swoon in ordinary love stories. She's been a fan of the romance genre since she found a grocery bag filled with her grandmother's old Harlequin romances when she was in high school. She's a fangirl for pretzel sticks, long walks through Prospect Park, and love stories featuring men who aren't crippled by their own masculinity. <laughs> and we have Dolores Fawson. Dolores is an award-winning author of more than 115 novels. Dolores is a prolific writer who has been publishing romance novels since the early 2000s. Before diving into romance, Dolores had a variety of careers, including being an Air Force captain, a special ed teacher, a rehab counselor, and a stay-at-home mom. So thank you all so much for joining us. I'm so excited to talk to you this morning. So, First, I always like to find out from authors, like when did your love for romance start? I know Kara, you kind of talked about it in your bio, but if you can expand on that and Mona and Dolores, if you could kind of tell us where your love of romance started. Sure, yeah. Um, I, like I said, I, I found a, 
like grocery bag of my grandmother's old Harlequins in the basement when I was in high school. And they're, you know, the little thin ones um, from like the seventies. That was my very first experience with them. Uh, but I really, I, uh, I fell in love with the safety of happy endings and not knowing exactly how we were going to get there. Uh, you know, that's the thrill of reading them, but um, that, that, that was, deeply comforting to me through many, many parts of my life and specifically the hardest parts of my life. That's what romance has done for me is, uh, it's, it's such a safe place. And, uh, you know, I gravitate towards safe places <laughs> like we all do. Um, th that's really where I, why I love the genre and how I got started there. What about you, Mona? Um, I think uh, I kind of had to be hit over the head with it a little bit. I um, I love, I mean, I think like many of us, I read, read like just about anything that I could get my hands on. And when I started to decide I wanted to write, I didn't know like what genre, or what kind of story I wanted to write. But then it hit me that every time I read a book, it didn't matter whether it was a fantasy or a mystery or whatever. I always wanted to know about the couple. I always was more interested in did Harry and Ginny get together? And how was that happily ever after? And when were they going to kiss? Like, it's the Harry Potter series, and I'm concerned about Harry's love life, right? That's the whole thing, right? So um, I think when, when I finally kind of put it all together, I realized that that's what I was after. I wanted that happily ever after. I wanted that tension, and I loved, like, the love. I love, I mean, everybody wants to be in love, and I loved experiencing that over and over again through different characters. So mm -hmm. I think... Um, that's where, um, I think that's where that came from. And when I realized that I could actually do it myself and I could like live in that world and, you know, keep them apart and then bring them together when I thought it was a good time for that, I was like, wow, this is really, this is really cool. So, um, I think that's where it came from for me. It was like, just love the couple. Or something. Awesome. What about you, Dolores? Well, I grew up in a family that read romance. Both my grandmother and my mother were big romance readers, so that, that helped. But I kind of broke off for a while once I went to college. And then in the 80s, I was in the Air Force. I was an Air Force captain, and I used to run war game exercises. And at night, there was really nothing to do other than just kind of sit around and monitor what was going on. So I started reading romance <laughs> to, to make the nights go go faster and because it was just something so warm and dreamy compared to the possibilities of what was going on in that fake world that we were creating with the war games so here I was reading you know the the Sandra Browns and the early Nora Roberts and all of that and and you know while everybody was in combat gear so that was how I, I really got started. Yeah. And like Kara said, there's a lot of safety in it. And oh, kind yeah. of like what you yeah. talked about too, Dolores, just kind of knowing like there's going to be a lot of that, you know, they're going to go through some stuff, but at the end, you know, they're going to be together. It's going to work out. Um, so I think a lot of readers really gravitate towards that and keeps us coming back to the um, romance genre. So you've been reading for a while, whether you're a romance reader or, you know, like Mona kind of read all over the place and then really gravitated towards romance. But how did you decide to start writing romance? Oh, wow. That I, I read for so many years and I really wanted to write a book, but we were moving every three years in the military. I had kids. We finally moved into a neighborhood in San Antonio, Texas. And my neighbor, my next door neighbor was a published romance writer, mm -hmm. Ben Robinson. And I went over to her house and I saw these books and I commented, I said, wow, I've always wanted to write a romance. And she said, are you waiting to get younger? <laughs> and that was my light bulb moment. I thought, what am I waiting for? I mean, if I fail, I fail. If I succeed, I succeed. But I went home that day and I started writing. So if she hadn't said those words to me, I probably would have floundered for another 10 years or so. Uh, so I, I thank her for that. That's awesome. What about you, Mona? So I think I touched on it a little bit um, before because I think I, I just write romance because I do love that happily ever after. And I love writing um, just happy stories that make people happy. I have some ideas for some not so happy stories, but um, I, you know, I, the thing is I'd have to live with those characters for a very long time and it's easier to live with these people um, than it is to live with like a psychotic killer or something. 
Um, that's not to say to rule all that out, but I think I really enjoy writing romance because I love romance and I, and I, and I feel like the people who are reading romance understand, you know, I mean, I think everybody wants to fall in love. So I think everybody should be reading romance because, you know, everybody wants to fall in love no matter what you think of the genre. But, um, so I think that's why I just like living with those people and making those happy endings. Sure. What about you, Kara? Oh, gosh. I got started, um, I was a receptionist at a, a nonprofit on Midtown East, and there was this, part of my job was to, like, do everyone's dishes. <laughs> so I had just finished doing everyone's dishes, and I went and sat at my desk, and I, it just, like, snapped and Googled um, how to make money using my creative writing degree. <laughs> and it brought me immediately to this gig website uh, where people were looking to hire ghostwriters. And I thought I can do that. And I started, originally I was writing across all sorts of genre fiction, like lots of fantasy, sci-fi, some mystery, thriller, uh, but the, the bread and butter was romance. And that was the part, like, like Mona was saying, like no matter what genre I was writing in, it was the love story that I was really excited to write and um, was the most interesting aspect to me always. Uh, and so from there, I was, uh, I was a ghost, romance ghostwriter for years and built up my client list and was able to leave my, my job uh, as a receptionist in order to full-time write romance. And then uh, decided that I wanted to stop selling my stories and keep them for me. And the book that just came out in on June 30th was the very first story. I was like, I don't think I'm going to sell this one. I think I'm going to keep this one and um, really wanted to put it out there with me attached to it. Awesome. Awesome. So you all have been reading for a while. So tell me what is your favorite or tell us your favorite subgenre within romance to read? Hmm. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I have to say, I I like the contemporary. Um, I have I do like a lot of the paranormal um, romances, but I'll be honest, the paranormal romances that I've been reading are like of the YA variety because I love that too. Um, I I uh, I don't know that there's any particular I mean I'll read almost like I read I think I really do stick with the contemporary for some reason I, I'm drawn to that and I like a little bit of magic I like a little bit of that paranormal um that fantasy kind of thing going on so I'd have to say that that would be my answer would be the paranormal contemporary what were you saying Dolores yeah, I read across the board too. I, I read everything and uh, I, I gravitate toward romantic suspense, but I also love a paranormal. Uh, I love the really sexy erotica books sometimes. Uh, I, I read a few historicals. I read straight contemporaries. You know, it just depends on, on the mood I'm in, but uh, at the core of it's romance. I, I, even if it's romantic horror, I will read that. So it's got to have that it's got to have that, you know, some kind of a hopeful, hope of love in it before it makes me sit down and read it. But it, it, the, the surroundings around it will make me just read it no matter what then. Yeah. I love a good shifter. Mm, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm like 98% contemporary. <laughs> Everybody, I, you know, I get excited about all the books, but, um, I like to say I'm a lazy reader, and so I have a hard time getting into like other worlds, if you will. I just like to read about like what I can imagine. So, <laughs> all right, let's talk tropes. What are your favorite tropes? I love a good fake relationship um, or second chances type mm -hmm. of thing. Um, and again, it was one of those things that hit me over the head when I was watching, like I was trying to figure out what tropes I like for something else. And I realized that all of my favorite sort of rom-coms ended up with these like fake relationships somehow. Um, so I do really, I do really like that. Um, I also love a good second chances 
um, because I like, I think I like to write the second chances mm -hmm. more than anything. Um, and of course, friends slash enemies to lovers, I just, it always draws me in, especially the enemies to lovers, I think. Um, so those would be my top two or three that I really like. What about either of you two, Kara or Dolores? I, I love the enemies to lovers too. In fact, I love to write it. I love to read it. That's one of my favorites. I also love reunion stories, especially if there's some redemption involved in that reunion story. Uh, and and I, I just, every now and then I'll even like a Beauty and the Beast story where you've got just this, you know, even if it happens to be in reverse, the kind of plain Jane going for the really super hot, hot, hot guy. I like those too. So uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, those are my favorites, but enemies to lovers, that's probably my top one. I love forced proximity. It just gets my heart beating. If you can lock them in an elevator, I'm like so happy. Although I will say that I have been trapped in an elevator once and it was not romantic Ooh. or sexy at all. <laughs> <laughs> so have you written any of your fa I mean like Kara you just said fake proximity or forced proximity is one of your favorite tropes but like I've read your novella and your two books your upcoming book also and there are, there's no forced proximity in there so <laughs> well the second one there's some forced emotional proximity That's true, yeah. The can't help falling they're like kind of forced to raise the same teenager <laughs> and they have to you know be close uh, I have, like I said, I've, I've written so many titles as a ghostwriter, so I, I did explore a lot of that, but, um, you know, I've heard Second Chance, uh, Age Gap, these, these are also ones that I love, mm -hmm. um, Single Dad, the, and, and those are mm -hmm. more what I've written so far. Yeah, and then, like, Ramona or Dolores, those favorite tropes, do you find yourself writing those into your books? Or do you try to find other tropes to kind of challenge yourself as a writer? Or, or how do you do it? I, I, the book that's on the shelves right now, Settling an Old Score, is, is an enemies to lover and a reunion story, too. So, And I do a lot of forced proximity in my Harlequin intrigues because they're obviously outrunning gunmen and, you know, lots of danger and whatever. But uh, in my HQNs, I can do forced, pro forced proximity, sometimes with a fake relationship are, you know, just because of families being drawn together. So no, I, I do write the tropes that I love. So my first book, yeah, my first book is that Second Chances with actually a secret baby um, in there. Um, and the, the, the second one doesn't necessarily fall under any, I guess maybe it's forced proximity a little bit, um, but I'm, I'm currently writing um, a fake relationship, Second Chances, so I think I, I must love the second chances because I keep drawing drawing myself back to that. But um, I am trying to incorporate some of the um, the ones that I love into that, like that fake relationship I really like. So I wanted to just explore that a little bit more. Okay. Um, so each Mona and Dolores, you each kind of just talked about like your recent books. So if all of you could just tell us about your most recent release, um, Blurbit. Um, name it just so the readers can be or, or the attendees can be aware. Yeah, um, this was my debut, Just a Heartbeat Away, came out on uh, June 30th. It's, um, let's see, okay, so Age Gap, Single Dad, Silver Fox, set in Brooklyn, um, but it's set in very specific neighborhoods of Brooklyn. It's like, uh, so it's got a little bit of a small town feel. My, my goal was to write a book set in New York City where they never go to Manhattan. <laughs> I live in New York City and I really enjoy staying in my neighborhood. Um, and I did that. Uh, let's see, they kind of re-find each other. Uh, she's not the mother of his child, but they re-find each other. And let's see, themes of grief. Um, kind of, uh, I wanted to write a story that really uh, cataloged the feeling of when you are first starting to, when someone is going, when you first start to realize you have feelings for someone and they, the way they are in your mind and in your heart just sort of starts to change. And that like very magical time, which is so filled with adrenaline and potential and excitement and, and fear, 
I wanted to write a story that um, really kind of cataloged the like everyday sort of life-changing bravery that you have to engage with in order to really start connecting with someone romantically. Awesome. My, my latest is called uh, Settling an Old Score. It's a Harlequin Intrigue, so obviously it's romantic suspense, and it is my 115th Harlequin, so it's kind of a nice milestone for me. Uh, I didn't know it was going to be my 115th when I wrote it, but, but uh, it's a, it ended up being one of my favorite stories anyway. It's a about a Texas ranger who's wrongfully accused of kidnapping the heroine's child. Well, obviously this does not please the heroine, so they're pitted against each other for the first part of the book. Um, and once his name is cleared, then uh, they face a lot of danger together, lots of forced proximity, uh, lots of protecting this baby, uh, this little baby that she's adopted and, uh, and he's learning to love. At the core of this story, and it's the core of all my stories, is is overcoming obstacles and learning to love again. And both of these people are very wounded and uh, they need the danger to bring them together uh, and, and to heal. And uh, so it's on shelves right now. Awesome. And Mona? So this, um, this is my debut, Then Now Always. It came out in January. Um, and it is, a, as I mentioned earlier, it's a second chances uh, with a secret baby. Um, and I think there, you know, there are some themes of like redemption is growth because there's, there's a 15 year gap between when she gets pregnant and when everyone, when the story happens um, type of thing. It's also told in two different timelines. The blurb for it um, was actually my Twitter pitch that um, helped me land my agent. And so the blurb was um, Indian girls don't have babies out of wedlock, but Maya did. <laughs> and now she has to tell Sam that their 15-year-old daughter is in trouble with the law. So that kind of sums it up right there. Um, but yeah, so I really did enjoy it. And it's out. It's, it's been out since January and it's out right now. And my next one doesn't come out until next January. Awesome. Awesome. So one of the things that I think you guys kind of have all talked about in your books and I think is so important is kind of like this theme of like family slash neighborhoods. I know that's a big theme for you, Kara. Mona, in your book, you know, it was a tight knit family as well. Um, Dolores, it sounds like with yours, that's, and so how do you usually kind of portray that or pull that in to make it like whether it's found family or actual family, like how do you work with that theme? Well, I, I have families in almost all my books. I come from a very large family. I have triplet sisters uh, in addition to a couple of brothers as well. So uh, I, I usually write about a, a family, a core family of uh, brothers or sisters. And uh, so that way I can kind of feed off of the energy of all of the characters involved in there, and yet there's a unity. Sometimes there's a disunity <laughs> that's uh, also contributing to the story, but uh, at, at the core of it is a family, and sometimes it's a family that they have to create, that they've lost and must recreate, a family that they must uh, kind of mend fences with, and sometimes, you know, those just learning to deal with the family you have, but there's, it all in all my books, these, they're, they're families. I think this, the, the same, I think in, in all of mine, there's always, um, there's families because I, I, in, in my mind, when you're, when you're developing that character, they developed a certain way because of the people that were around them by right? their parents, their siblings, and a lot of their circumstances are where they are right now. And the way that they behave is a result of what happened. And so a lot of their growth is kind of with the family or sometimes in spite of their family. Um, but um, I think families are so important to everybody. Um, and I think that's something to really, no one kind of lives on an, an island by themselves. They were, they got there somehow. Um, even if they live alone and they are alone if, in, 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 in your book, um, they came from somewhere mm -hmm. and something shaped them. And so the families. Um, in my books all have a pretty big, um, a pretty big role, um, siblings or parents or best friends, even best friends or family. Um, so that's another, um, that's another thing that I like to incorporate um, so that it, one, it makes your story more rounded and also 
it's more realistic because that's, that's how people are. It, it's really important to me to add uh, strong elements of family. Uh, I think, well, both my husband and I are the youngest of five. And so we have lots of siblings and big families okay. and um, the, the ties are very like interesting and dynamic and different with every person. And for me, it's kind of the same thing that uh, like the happy endings give you safety. Those family relationships that I try to write, even if they are tumultuous, they uh, offer the, both the characters and the readers kind of a place to just take a breath. Like we know that even if it's not actual family, if it's friends or chosen family, whatever it is, we, I want there to be characters in there that uh, are safe places for the, both the reader and the character. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So not quite book related, but do you have any non-reading hobbies? Any crafters? <laughs> I love to bake. <laughs> yeah. So this is a problem because my kids don't live at home anymore. So when I bake, I have to do something with this and that <laughs> so that we're not just eating it. But um, I do love to bake. Um, I bake cakes I make chocolate chocolate I mean whatever I mean I haven't done a quote-unquote new recipe in a long time but during shutdown my daughter was home for a little bit and so we were able to bake together again um, and we used to bake together when she was growing up and now she kind of does her own thing she has her own recipes so that's kind of fun um, as well so yeah I think um, it's a big stress relief for me um, so I do like to and, and it also allows me to be, to be creative in a different way sure Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I draw and I'm in some drawing classes right now and it's actually a uh, like five-year goal to do some sort of maybe a graphic novel or web comic or something like that even just to illustrate my characters as I see them in my head that is really exciting for me which I think is that's news to my agent who <laughs> five -year <goal>. Hi, Tara. <laughs> What about you, Dolores? Stained glass, uh, and in part because I write a lot, and I can still continue to write while I'm doing stained glass. Uh, I can transcribe while I'm while I'm doing stained glass. Uh, I, I for relaxing, I do some genealogy also sometimes. But I, I, I have one-year-old twin grandbabies, so they have become my hobby. Mm -hmm. um, I read to them every day. I make sure that I'm there to read to them. I say that's my hobby. My investment is making sure that they have a good hour of reading every single day from me. So, so those are my hobbies right now. But writing consumes a, a great deal of my schedule. So awesome. And um, before we kind of wrap it up to open up for questions, do you all have a favorite or like a hometown indie bookstore? Um, that you wanted to give a shout out to today? There's so many. <laughs> There's so many. Um, I would, you know, one more page in Virginia, Cupboard Makers, um, Newtown Books in Pennsylvania, which is where I grew up. So all of them have been great. And then, of course, I don't know what region everyone else is from, but there's loyalty books in D.C. and politics and prose and They've all been all very supportive of romance and um, of me as well as I was debuting earlier. So I was able to squeeze in some events at some of these places before everything shut down. So um, that would be my shout out there. Awesome. Uh, Books are magic in Cobble Hill in Brooklyn. I love that bookstore. Um, Word bookstore in Greenpoint. That is really romance centric and um, that's, like kind of Sarah McLean's home is is Word Bookstore. And then uh, my actual hometown, Ann Arbor, Michigan, there's Nicola's Books, which has been really supportive of me and, and of romance in general, and uh, Literati Bookstore, both really great indie bookstores. Mm -hmm. We move around a lot, and I'm in Bloomington, Indiana right now, and my favorite now is uh, called uh, uh, Corner Books, and it's on a corner in the town square. Uh, it is just one of those phenomenal stores that you can just browse. I mean, you know, so you can spend hours wandering around in. Very light, very cozy, and very, very friendly place. But we, we move about every three years, and I've just learned to find 
a bookstore and kind of uh, adopt it and, and pester them until they'll carry my book. So, <laughs> you know, and most of the time I don't have to pester too much. I just have to ask, but right now it's Corner Books. That's awesome. Um, so we have a couple of questions coming in, but before I get to the question, just one more time, if you can tell us your most recent release and then your, any information about any upcoming releases. My uh, most recent was my debut, Then Now Always, um, and that was in January, and I have Then There Was You coming up in January of 2021, and I do believe it's up on Edelweiss right now for, um, as a galley, um, as a digital galley, and um, the co I have a, I don't have any way to show you the cover, it's on my computer, but it's a beautiful cover. Anybody who's followed me has seen it because I blasted it all over the place, mm -hmm. um, but that's what I have right now. Um, I had Just a Heartbeat Away, it, it uh, came out on June 30th. Um, I've got uh, Can't Help Falling, it's up on NetGalley, Digital, digital Galley. Um, that is August 25th, gosh, only 10 days from now. Um, I also have the third in this series, which it, it shares a book birthday with you, Mona, um, in January. That's flirting with forever. Uh, and I, I also have Audible original series coming out. The first one will be on October 20th, and that'll be audiobook first, and then hopefully in print later. Awesome. And then Dolores? Gore is on shelves right now, and uh, in about 10 days, then the, the next Harlequin Intrigue comes out, and it's called His Brand of Justice. And then about three weeks after that, my HQN comes out called Wild Nights in Texas. So that, that's the next, the next six, 30 or 40 days of, of mm -hmm. work, so. Okay, awesome. So Kelly has a question and um, Kelly hosts the Boobies and Newbies podcast <laughs> and she is a blast if you follow her on social. Um, so anyway, Kelly asks, have you found your writing processes affected during the pandemic and have you had to adjust your process? I <laughs> was able to be a full-time writer during shutdown and for me that was really exciting. Um, I do still have a day job that I go to um, now that everything has reopened, but I'm not gonna lie, it was kind of nice to just be a writer. Um, so I adjusted my schedule accordingly. I would get up in the morning before you know everybody else, everybody else in my family did, and get a few hours of writing in then, and then I'd have some time with the family, and then I'd go back to it in the afternoon, and you know. Um, so I think I adjusted that way in the in that I got a taste of what it would be like to be a full-time writer and I really did like it um so that would have been my adjustment that's awesome uh for me it maybe had the opposite effect of what you might think because I, I am a full-time writer and up till now almost all of my writing life has been very insular and you know like at my desk with my coffee in the morning but um quarantine happened and i was releasing my first book and promoing my first book so during quarantine suddenly my writing world was like shuffled online and it became very public in a way that i had never experienced but also you know cyber public <laughs> just confusing and um and intense uh but yeah i'm learning a lot of new skills in quarantine. <laughs> Sadly, my life didn't change that much. So I, I've, I've been a full-time writer for about 15 years now. So I, I, I kept my routine. I start writing about eight in the morning. I write until about five or six at night, you know, with some breaks in between, uh, you know, uh, just, uh, it really, I just kind of, it gave me, actually, it was nice to have the writing to focus on rather than thinking about what was going on in the world around me. So I just kind of dug in and I had a lot of contracts that I needed to get written. And I thought, you know what, this is, you know, quiet time and do grocery deliveries now. So that's, that's my big change. I do grocery deliveries as opposed to going out. So. Yeah, awesome. So a question from Angie, she wants, she's wondering if you remember the first author or book that you read that you got you hooked on romance. Hmm. Hmm. 
Wow. As an adult, it was Sandra Brown. Okay. Uh, yes. And I, I think the title Sunset Embrace, it's got sunset in it. I think it's Sunset Embrace. It was an historical Western. And as an adult, I, I read some of my mom's, uh, you know, when I was a kid. Uh, but the, this, this was the one I remember purchasing, <laughs> sitting down and reading it. I don't have this one. I do remember I sort of on the sly read um, The Other Side of Midnight when I was like 12 and I probably shouldn't have been reading it. But um, and that maybe might have been my first foray into like a real like novel. And there that's certainly not a romance, but um, it got me interested in all those different kinds of things. And I and I'd always read everything. So I I kind of wish I had a good answer for this, but I don't have like one particular book. I think I, it goes, goes back to my first answer where I just loved anything, anybody who was falling in love anywhere. Mm -hmm. Gosh, I actually have it. I'd say um, Twilight too, of course. Mm -hmm. That kind of really showed me a new thing. But um, Julie Garwood, oh, The Bride, oh oh classic. <laughs> That's awesome. I know, Mona, I'm like you. It's a really tough question. And I, I just, I've always been a reader. But I, and I talk about this a lot. When I read Jennifer Cruzy, I read like three of her books in a row. And I was like, this is what I need to be reading. Like, they're funny and, you know, witty. And she was like, feminist and body positive and you know and they have like the bad sex and I was like I need all of these books but <laughs> I love those too yeah all right so Jordan has a question can you share a recent read any genre that inspired you yeah yeah um wow. get a life Chloe Brown mm. I I don't know if, if it inspired me, but it was exactly what I needed at that time. Their, her characters are so witty and their repartee and the banter was great. And it was so honest because she talked about her, the main character has fibromyalgia and she talked about the pain and, you know, this, this girl is in a lot of pain and she's on some meds and everything. Um, at, yet she lives alone and, and she's gaining her independence. And it was just a really, really... Um, it was a fun book because of the banter between the two, um, but it was really kind of an inspiring book to read because it wasn't sort of your typical hero and heroine um, in any way, shape, or form. And um, I really did, I really did enjoy it. I really, I really enjoyed Tally Hubbard. And I have her next one, um, Danny Brown, on on my Audible, ready to go. Wow. Well, boy, I read a, I, I read a lot. Audible is my. I do a lot of audibles and I also read. And so I usually go through a couple of books a month, which I know doesn't sound like a lot, but considering how much I write, then it is. I, the, the latest one I finished was uh, uh, the Golden, Golden and Death, J.D. Robb's Golden and Death. And, and it inspired me for this reason. This was the 50th book spanning like 28 years of the same series with the same characters and the same couple. <laughs> And all I could think of was, my God, this is an accomplishment. I mean, how can you keep it fresh after 20 something years? And yet she managed to do it. She kept it fresh. Mm -hmm. She kept it so entertaining. And all I could think of was that's, you know, that's who I want to be when I grow up. So. <laughs> uh, for me, it was Kim Ji Young, born 1982. This book is feminist and really kicks ass. And in the romance genre, it was uh, The Flat Share, Beth mm -hmm. O'Leary. This book I thought was so cool. It's, um, it's like a post-it note epistolary. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. She really does this whole romance arc on post-it notes back and forth to one another. And I just, I thought it was really awesome what she did in this book. Before we wrap up, um, do you have any other recommendations that you want to share with the group for recent reads, um, specifically romance, or anything that you're really excited about coming up. And yeah, go ahead. 
summer at Haven Lake. I've just started it. It is outstanding. Mm -hmm. So if you get a chance to read that, I'm sure the ending will be as fantastic as the beginning is, but it's Ray and Things. And I, it's such a long title. I always have to look at it, but it's uh, Summer at Haven Lake. Awesome. I just got, um, you had me at Ola mm -hmm. uh, in, in the mail. I'm so excited. It's, it's definitely, it's at the top of my TBR. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm currently reading um, Real Men Knit in addition to Kara's book, um, but I would I would also recommend The Chai Factor by Sarah Haron. It was mm -hmm. really like if you want like a strong woman, it's a really really good book there. And I am personally keeping the recipe Sonali Dave's recipe for persuasion as my treat for when I finish a manuscript. Like I don't get to read a Sonali Dave book until I've written a manuscript or hit something. So um, I can't read it right now because I'm not allowed to, but I recommend it to everybody else um, to read it. Um, and I just wanted to add, because Dolores had said earlier that she liked kind of the beauty and the beast thing. I love Eloisa James when beauty tamed the beast. That's one of my favorites. And I'm not a huge historical fan. I, I like historical, but it's not always my go-to, but that was amazing. That book was phenomenal too. Um, so Kelly says you had me at Ola was very that you're going to love it and I agree with that assessment I finished it last week and I haven't been able to forget about it since then and Linda also says recipe for persuasion was so good so you Mona you have something to look forward to when you finish that manuscript um, so before we wrap it up um, kind of like a quick last call for any questions um, but we do just want to, um, again, thank you to the authors and Harlequin and the team at Bookstore Romance Day for putting this together. So um, you can visit bookstoreromanceday.org to support your, support your local indie and um, make sure you follow Book Clubbish and Harlequin on social. Um, that's their handle on almost everything. I looked it up, or you can just go to their site and find it. And um, they're just a reminder about the gift with purchase. So that is that if you purchase the latest novel from any of one of any of the Harlequin authors participating in panels today, you're able to receive a free ebook from Harlequin. Um, and it looks like Harlequin put that in the chat again, so that's available. And um, thank you so much for everybody who joined us, both the authors, um, the people watching. Hi, Tiff, I see Tiff. Um, I know her, I know a lot of the people in this chat. <laughs> um, but this has been fantastic, and um, we will look for you online. If anybody, we have a few minutes, so if you wanna quickly just mention your social handle, the one that you use the most, where people can find you, that would be great. Yeah, um, I'm at Cara Bastone, it's spelled there at the bottom of my box, uh, on Instagram, and that's where I'm most active, but I'm learning Twitter too, so you can find me in either place. Yeah, I'm at Mona Shroff Author also on um, Instagram, and it's Mona Shroff Right on Twitter, but I am mostly on Instagram. I'm on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram, and I have a readers group called Thoughts and Fireballs. It's on Facebook too, if you want to, to join us for some book discussions and just some fun over there. Awesome. All right, well, thank you all again for joining us. Thank you for Harlequin and Bookstore Romance Day for putting this together. I see Billy um, stop by, so thank you to Billy for all of this and um, support your local indie. Um, and you can go to the Bookstore Romance Day website and find your local indie and look for any of these books or any books that you want. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank, Thank you so much.